decades ago. Films were made that were so vile, so depraved, and desensitizing that the ever-so-defensive moral guardians of the United Kingdom vowed that they would never see wide release to protect the precious populace. In their fervor, however, they did not realize that by taking them away, the films would become even more infamous and spread even further. They are the Video Nasties, and this is Schlock and Terror, where your host shall guide you through each one of these banned films. The films discussed are not for the faint of heart, and do contain disturbing scenarios and moments. So if that is too much for you, do yourself a favor and stop playing the podcast now. here back to Lock and Terror. Sorry for the really, really long hiatus, but I'm going to try something different today. Just one co-host this time. Um, say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> I'm old and mature and totally original. Mm. Uh, he's, he's been still in shock from the ending of the uh, film. Yeah, it was like somebody saw Bonnie and Clyde and forgot the, why the ending was good in that and just did it without any setup. Mm. Um, I thought it was hilarious. Oh no! It, it was, I just lo- like you see it, and it's because I was came into it going, oh yeah, bad seventies film, awesome, and I'm watching it going. I was trying to not like it at the start. I'm like, oh hang on, it's kind of weird, and I don't get what the teenagers are doing, but you know it, it makes sense. And then it didn't. Mm. And I mean, well, yeah. I think we spent most of the time watching the movie trying to figure out what the hell was going and on. I, in a way, I think that was the point, mm. and that's why the ending was so disappointing. Like mm. everything is so neatly wrapped up, and then, <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> so, if you haven't guessed from all of that, we watched a Bay of Blood, uh, also known. Uh, forgive my butchering of Italian. Uh, Rizzone e Catina, which is basically Italian for chain reaction, because everyone dies. Yeah, so, um... Uh, it's also known as Carnage, Bloodbath, Bloodbath Bay of Death, The Ascendant, um, Last House on the Left, Part 2. What was Part 1? I'll explain in a second. Okay. Uh, Ecology of a Crime, and its most famous title, Twitch of a Death Nerve. Uh, the thing about that um, that previous title, uh, Last House on the Left, uh, Part Two, um, when it was re- uh, by the time it was re released, uh, Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left was out and being a big deal. Uh-huh. And the thing about Italian horror films, as I said before, sometimes when they try to remarket and stuff, they rename it and try to pass it off as a sequel. Like um, the two first films we looked at were um, were absurd and anthropophagous, um, one uh, being called zombie some number and the other being called zombie some number to get um, to make it seem like a, a sequel to zombie which was also called zombie 2 which was trying to market also trying to market on um, dawn of dead which in Europe or Italy or somewhere was called zombie so it's like the thing the Asylum do now, where they made Titanic 2 on the grounds that no one could copyright the name Titanic. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It was a frequent thing with um, with low-budget um, Italian films. Like, there's so many zombie quote-unquote mm. sequels. So they're trying to do that with Last House on the Left, even though this is not a sub of house and it has not, it's not a rape-revenge film like uh, that one. And well, There wasn't even a house on the left. There was an aban- There was an abandoned nightclub. Well, I think it was an abandoned nightclub. Mm-hmm. There was the house where people that everyone seemed to be fighting over, and then the lawyer had a house somewhere. And uh, then the entomologist and the terror lady. Oh, you know they they shared a house. Yeah, that's mm. true. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's the thing about those um 
alternate title thing. Sometimes they have nothing to do with that movie at all. Like, Anthropophagus didn't have his... Oh, did it have a zombie? I don't know what the hell Dave was. Uh, he was, like, zombie ripoff of Michael Myers with bowling shoes and I forgot who, what the hell he was. And Anthropophagus was just a cannibal. That's all he was. Uh, and this a time... cannibal that ate babies and his own intestines. Well, yeah, intestines are very nutritious. <laughs> like, honestly. You know, all the food goes through them, so surely the nutrients are still in there. Hmm... Um, it was, um, um, the director is pretty prominent, actually. The reason why it's so, um, good with cinematography and stuff is because it was by Mario Bava, who was pretty much, um, the pioneer of, again, forgive my butchering of Italian, Giallo, um, films, which is sort of like proto-slasher and post-film noir with lots of pretty colours. Um... He design- it was designed as really as a comeback film in 1971. He, he mainly did films in the 60s, uh, um, like, uh, what were they? Um, uh, Black Sunday, Black Sabbath, Hercules and the Haunted uh, World, and Danger Diabolic, which, um, which a lot of uh, MST3K fans would know as the la- was once the last episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000 before the... Th- um, 11th season on Netflix. Uh, so yeah, it was designed as a comeback in 1971 after he lost the distribution deal with, um, American International Pictures. Um, and yeah, he was a big deal. He, um, he pioneered Giallo, um, with his film Blood and Black Lace. Uh, he influenced the look of Alien with his film Planet of the Vampires. Wow. Yeah, vampires, vamp, space vampires are pretty common, actually. In films. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that surprised, but just Planet of the Vampires, you're kind of like, well, don't they run out of people's blood to suck? Like, you know, that's kind of... The big thing about vampires is, you know, they, I, I think they need human blood. Mm. Well, Life Force, um, Toby Hooper's vampire, space vampires film kind of tries to solve that by making it about life, um, they need people's life force. Yeah, but you still, if you've got a planet of just vampires, either you develop space travel or you're screwed. Mm. Um, Most of them tend to do, actually. Okay, so, so they, they are, they, they're aware of the problem if you bite, if, if you drink blood from every single mm-hmm. person on Earth. Yeah, Mario Bava was pretty humble, actually, because not only would he do um, cinematography um, effects and lighting for his own work, but also on his friends' films without credit. Which is probably why so many um, Italian films kind of have his sort of look to it. Um, but yeah, it's pr- probably a lot better than most of the films we saw before this one, which were, okay, two of them were released by Joe D'Amato, who did um, did that kind of a Holocaust porn film. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite happy just watching this one. <laughs> oh yeah, only one bit of nudity in that. Well, you know, like, that's the thing is, I mean, right near the start, I mean, it just got, so it, I had no idea what was, like, the, the very opening shot is something like, it's just an old woman in a wheelchair, mm. and I think it's supposed to be a really long establishing shot and emotional, but it just isn't. No, it was just her longingly looking out oh, it, there. Even before she looks out the window, she's got to be the slowest person in a wheelchair I have seen, and then... Four teenagers rock up in the Happy Mobile. Uh, let's get to. Oh, let's okay. wait for that okay. first. Right. Sorry, just... we we just went by a bit quickly there. Yeah, no, I'm just yeah. Yeah, uh, this was supposed to be. This is so with, with this being a comeback film. It's kind of like the goriest film that he's done. It even made Christopher Lee sick. You know wow. the the Christopher Lee. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Dracula, Mr. Wicker Man. Yeah. No. Uh, um. But yeah, of course, with it being so gory, of course it ended up on the video Nazis list. Because back when it was first released, it was refused to have a certificate. Um, they didn't give it a um, certification. Um, sorry. Uh, looking at notes, sorry. <laughs> Secret revealed, I have notes. We can, we can edit this out. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It was rejected by the BBFC um, in 1972, hence why it ended up as one of the prosecutable video nasties. Basically what that means is that people got arrested over this film. 
Wow. Like people who sell it or maybe even later on when collecting and smuggling it, they would have gotten arrested and or fined or stuff like that. <laughs> the moral panic was really, really stupid. Wow. Um, it did it did get re-released in nineteen ninety four, but with a lot of stuff cut out, like about forty three seconds, but considering how much how much time it took for us to try and figure out what the hell was going on, that would mean a lot. Forty three seconds, yeah, it would be like the blood I'm assuming just the blood fest bit. Forty three, sorry. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Um the teenage girl having a throat cut, that was cut. Yeah, no, I I mean you didn't really need... You wouldn't miss too much from that. You'd still get the story. The head hit by... Wait, the hatchet? Or maybe it was the bill hook? Wait, no, was that done when the bug man's wife got decapitated? No, no, no. Um, no, a hatchet. Um, or a head hit by a hatchet. That was... Uh, that's reducer cut. Uh, the entire machete uh, bill hook head scene. That was oh, pretty good. Oh, yeah. That, that was reduced down. The couple being impaled by the sphere. Oh, yeah. And the guy impaled and stuck. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so most of the good gory bits would have been shortened or at least cut completely. Wait, so that was in 1994? Yeah. But, like... Britain. Yeah, but I was going to say, hadn't Friday, like, Friday the 13th come out and done the exact same thing before 94? When was oh, Friday? way before 94, yeah. That's, that's kind of a double standard there. Mm. Uh, there's a bit of a double standard with your Nazis in general, actually. Yeah, uh, well, it's uh, there's this one film which we'll get to uh, uh, someday that pretty much shows that, oh, wait, that film agrees in generally with people who hate video Nazis. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, you know what, um, no, it's whenever. Anyway, um, let's start, we'll probably start talking about it. I'm stumbling. Oh, yeah, so, um, I think, we'll, well, I guess it would make sense to go through a recap. Yeah, and that's on, what, that's yeah. generally, that's generally what we do, and then... Yeah. I didn't just comment. That's just yeah, generally so what we do in this. So we, we start off with our um nice scenic view of an old woman in a wheelchair. Over and over again. Yeah. Like just her longing out the window. Then we give her five minutes and then she dies. Uh, by rope? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, more, more specifically, yeah. A guy rocks up and uh, manages to contrive an incredible situation where she sort of, I think, like moves her head into a noose. And then trips out of her wheelchair. It was quite extraordinary series of events, actually. Uh, and she's just uh, hanging there, but... And then he leaves a suicide note. Yeah. But then it cuts to him um, walking away with the suicide note not there. Yeah, no, and that's the other thing. Um, so after five minutes of a woman doing nothing, we then get five minutes of a murderer doing nothing. As he walks to the front door to check if anyone's there, and walks back, and you see every shot of his walk down the corridor... And back again. Mm, riveting, yeah. Oh, you know, and I'm just sort of like, okay, he's going to die now, because... And then I'll know it dies! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Knife in the back. Yeah, no. And then we get the shot of um, the woman without the suicide note again, but in reverse. Yeah, no, then, then we played the same shot. And also there was no body, but at least we found out later the body got moved, and that's why, but it was still a bit... We didn't see the body get moved. We just suddenly saw everything missing again. Mm. Uh, then we meet the lawyer guy. Oh yeah, what, Mr. Lawyer Man. The butchin guy with the furry chest and chain because 70s. Oh yeah, no, he, yeah. I'm think, I was thinking Big B Wolf when I saw him at first. Mm. And the, and his lover who pretty much just turns up much, much later in like the third act or so. Yeah, well, really. what was her name like? I don't even remember her name. She was... Um, I don't think we remember anyone's name. Really. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if she had a name. I um, think she was just... I checked in the recap earlier oh. yeah, and uh, her name's Laura. I did not get that at all, alright? No. So we, we have Laura who provides us with some interesting um, cut-ins where she's lying down and then sitting up again. Mm. And then when he leaves, he um, she takes her fairy blanket off and just so he could caress her. Oh, face. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not sure if it was... He, I couldn't tell exactly what it was doing because it was reaching for the boob, but I don't really know because, you know, the camera's the way, but it wasn't really long enough for him to... Do anything. Mm. And is there any I think it was like a stro- I think it was trying to stroke it. That's but all. we didn't see the arm move. It was almost like a. We didn't even see. Like it, it like was a, um. It was kind of like um. Yeah, like cut um um above the chest. Though. Yeah. So we never really properly see what happened. There. And so it was like, like, like a good job, like you know, pat on like pat on the head. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, you, you did pretty good in there. You did, you did a good job. Um. 
Uh, so, and for the rest of the minutes, we just see him leaving and going to the bay. I had a good pr um, um, transition shot with his, of his phone going on to those old Rory dial phones that are back on, and then cut to um, the fuel pump being put back. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, no, they, 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 I'm going to give him credit. Like, for he had no budget, and you can tell it's all shot handheld. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, when... he's done this for... Yeah. more than a decade uh, and people have looked up to him so he does know what he's doing it's not like the previous films where you, where you watch where it's like no one knows how to block and cut and yeah. edit and um ah. you know and on top of that he could actually tell a good story up until the end but we'll get to that we'll get to that um <laughs> so yeah so lawyer man rocks up in no, that's right lawyer man heads toward town <laughs> but we don't actually see him arrive we, no He's just sort of there, and then... We just cut to the kids in the Happy Mobile. Oh, yeah, so then... Out of, so, yeah, four teenagers... Oh, no, wait, 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 before that, I've just remembered. Bugman and oh, yeah. Squidman. Yeah, so we have them, um, yeah, Squidman and Bugman and Squidman. And arguing about the ethics of murdering bugs. Yeah, so clearly, hey, one of us is a murderer. Um, and the two couple watching... Yeah, there were these two people who... I think they don't appear for about half an hour to an hour after this, but they're watching these two men with binoculars... Um, voyeurism. Mm. And oh, hang so on, I'm trying to, um, trying to remember. Um, one other reason why this film was made is because Mario Bava wanted to work with uh, Laura Betty again. They worked together on Blood Brides. Which one was Laura Betty? Um, that's what I'm trying to find out. Um, I think she might be that um, wom uh, binocular woman. Yeah, Lady Macbeth. Yeah, I, I thought, and that would make more sense on the grounds that she probably had the biggest part. Mm. Uh, well, sorry. She had the biggest part after she came back after an hour of absence. Yeah, and kids absent as well. They were the most absent. Oh, yeah, no, the ten seconds of children. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so while she looks up who, which one Betty was, mm. um, so, yeah, we had a... Um, after we have a discussion about the ethics of murder, we have um, four bug teenagers... Bug murder, of course, bug murder. Oh, yeah, bug murder, completely different. <laughs> Um, we had four teenagers in what looked like... The Happy Mobile. Yeah, it was a Happy Mobile. So it was a car that was a really tiny car. It looked sort of like one of those quad... One of those bu um, beach buggy things. Yeah, that's what they're describing it. And it was a bright yellow and the... the um... It looked, had a permanent happy face. Yeah, the bull bar was like in a smiley face and the two headlights were on top like a pair of eyes and they did a couple of donuts and then went into... Oh, a... They really loved doing the oh, donuts. Oh, yeah, did donuts. It was pretty good. <laughs> and then they, they rock up in an abandoned nightclub because you know every bay with three houses. Okay, I oh. think I think Laura Betty might have been the fortune teller woman. Oh yeah, I see. I forgot about her because she did nothing for the plot. Um, mm. You know the the bug man has a wife who looks kind of like a wicker. Um, Wiccan. She's. Where's all black and uh, uses tarot I think she cards. was like a fortune teller. She did tarot cards and stuff. And, uh, well, wait, are we up to that bit yet? Oh, or? no, but I figured we should mention who she was. Cause, yeah, 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 she did some. She just gets mad at her husband for doing what he does with bugs. And, yeah. And yeah. He, she's pretty much the herald character, except, except she tells no one that there's doom coming. It's more to herself. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. There, death everywhere. Either that or she's really bad at solitaire. <laughs> Um, With her own cards. Yeah, that's why she's really bad at it. Oh man, this isn't a. I know, full house, that's poker. Maybe, maybe she just didn't know what she was playing. Um, and her doom is like, oh crap, I left my good bet deck of cards at home. At least she wasn't using Uno cards. Mm. I've, I've played poker with Uno, it does not work. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, the Happy teenagers. Mobile arrived yeah. at the bay. And, do, and they're just pretty much doing what kids do. They go to an abandoned nightclub and dance around. Um, one one girl but constantly flashed. Oh, freaking um, yeah, mini dress woman with well, mini dress girl with her seven panty shots. I mm. think accounted. Um, I by the end of it, it was a shirt. Not a. It didn't look like a dress. It was a shirt. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, it pretty much doubled that once she stripped down for um skinny dipping. I yeah, must admit, it makes sense with skinny dipping, and it's not like oh, naked in a summer party or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I I've got to say. Congrats for making the nudity not random, mm. but at the same time, you lose points because why are the teenagers... Like, you pick up two Scandinavian chicks, and the first thing you do is go, hey, let's drive to the middle of nowhere. I and dance around in an abandoned building. Well, they didn't know it was there, that's the thing. Like, if I... 
You know, if you're gonna pick up a couple of chicks with a with a really really dirty pool. Remember yeah, that? yeah, the dirty pool that one of them nearly goes into, and thankfully one of them was smart enough to say, "Dude, no, there's a plank of wood in this pool." Mm. Anyway, um, so then two of them start, two of the guy, the two guys start fighting over one of the chicks, and sort of. They, then they head off to. They break into the lawyer's place. Oh yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, so. The one of them goes skinny dipping on her own, and the other two guys are chasing after the other girl who hasn't been flashing the camera. Which, with my knowledge of teenage guys, doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know, uh, evil one. I think they would have gone with evil one because they're both conventionally really attractive. Honestly. Yeah, but but that that's the thing about exploitation films. Um, the reason why they're the way they are and why they're so popular is because. Um, they showed things that m- mainstream films couldn't show. All the gore and nudity. And stuff. Yeah. Um, Mario Bava did it beautifully, but it's just like I've seen worse. I've definitely seen yeah. worse. Oh yeah, but yeah. So when they they get sick of the nightclub, and decide, hey, there's a house. Let's go inside. And oh, a house that could have been owned by anyone, like um, I don't know, a murderer, maybe. Yeah, but you know, everyone, well, almost everyone's a murderer. And so anyway, they rock up and decide, let's break, well, let's sneak in a window and let's party in this guy's house and have sex on his bed. <laughs> Uh, if one, um, we cut that, we get then go to the skinny dipping woman. Um, um, she stumbles upon a um a dead body. Like her, she got hooked onto the rope attached to um the the body of the guy who got killed in the very beginning. Yeah, the the killer whose body was moved, mm-hmm. and we didn't see the body getting moved, and that's why we were confused at this point. Yeah, yeah, we pretty much. Um, I honestly thought it was a lawyer guy. Yeah, we first. thought lawyer died because. Everyone had the we same hair. We really, really had trouble figuring out who was killed and who was the killer for yeah. a while. Everyone has dark curly hair. It's hard. Yeah, all the guys are the same. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Um, so. So. Uh, so she got um, the robot stuck to her. Then it pulled up back to floating and just kind of booped her cheek. The hand booped her cheek. And oh yeah, that, that's, there's this thing. So yeah, it's got this this brilliant first look of oh someone's touching me. That's hot too. Oh, that's a dead body. This is not, uh, and just you know, you had that almost perfect. Like, wait, is she really just that into whatever? Like, mm-hmm. some stranger touches my waistline when I'm in no clothes. My first response isn't yeah. My first response is who are you? And then if they're dead, then you do the freak out. But yeah. anyway, she runs off. I'm um, getting her shirt, me dress back on, not her underwear. Oh, you know, um, yeah, she's running, and I swear it's a different shirt at this point because it doesn't stay on her properly. Mm. And she's being chased... Well, she's being chased by the camera. Um, we get a lot of shots, overhead shots of her looking behind her and running, but... In the wet dress, yeah. Oh, in the wet dress, and then she gets... She ends up with a bill blade. Uh, it's called a bill hook. Yeah, bill uh, hook. I th- we thought it was a mache at first, but it's a bill hook, which yep. is actually... I, I really wish we could see in um, more horror films now because yeah. it not only do you have a stabbing slashing sort of thing like a machete but you can hook that, that, that's a pretty cool weapon but yeah um she's actually i think she's meant to be what the poster which i'll show later is trying to resemble the the hooking of the bill hook on her neck that that was pretty yeah, cool yeah so she she ends up dead yeah um with her butt showing yeah oh yeah with her butt showing for the yeah. that was the final panty shot yeah yeah um we do figure out later on that it was simon the squid guy who's yeah. been killing the teenagers. Yeah, so... It was just really damn hard to tell because everyone's a killer. <laughs> yeah, Everyone. So, so, yeah, so so for context of what actually happened, basically, uh, squid guy Simon saw that the woman, the naked woman had seen the body, mm. and so he's like, oh, crap, I've got to tie up the loose end. But when you kill one teenager and there are four of them... Oh, i got to kill them all. you got to kill all of them. Well, actually, it makes sense because you've got to cover your witnesses. So mm. he decides that he wants to be a cat, and he... <laughs> Bumps a oh, flower yeah, pot yeah. After, off a window. Yeah, after, yeah, after he kills the woman, he heads to the house because he saw more people there. And since we're getting the camera's point of view, not Simon's point of view, not giving away, yeah. uh, we see just nothing, like a visible hand booping up. Yeah, the- then, yeah the, the flower pot falls and this tricks the one of... So two other people in the house... It now distracts have, the white afro guy. Yeah, so white afro guy is not having sex. And the other two are, so of course it's on White Afro Guy to check the door because that's what I do when someone breaks my pot plant. Well, and then of course he ends up with a bill hook in his face, mm. and he goes down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get why. The, well, at first we just were confused by what the hell is a plant falling off? It's like a cat. Yeah, and then, then you realize it's the knock on the door equivalent. It's yeah, the, so why not a knock on the door? Yeah, and I mean you know, 
Because, yeah, you, don't, you can't, like... You, you, there was no way it was an accident, so we're assuming that's what happened here. Mm. Yeah, and then he... And at first, I kind of thought, oh, maybe we're just meant to identify the killer by the weapon. That's how I later figured out, oh, it was Simon, once yeah. we saw his billhook. But then we saw that um, there was a spear just lying around. That lawyer guy has a lot of African decoration, including spears. And so, of course, the spear must have been grabbed, and that was used to kill the teenagers. Now, this is a scene that Friday the 13th, part 2, I think, um, snatched. The the spear going, through, kebabbing um, yeah. the so two teenagers. Got both of them and then through the bed. But I'm pretty... Because I know I think it's... Yeah, one of the, the first and the second one has a machete go through the bottom of the bed into them. So this one, we had a spear going through the top in, and then it looked like they were continuing to make out after being stabbed. Lauren thinks they were trying to escape. I think they were just trying to go out with a bang because they weren't screaming enough or anything. They just sort of, I don't know, they, they didn't seem to be too bothered by having sprouted an extra limb through their stomachs. I think they were just rivering, uh, riv whatever the word is. Writhing. Yeah, writhing yeah. to death, like just... But it did look like they were still humping each other, really. Yeah, so... Got... And uh, I gotta give credit to this film that, well, most of the time, the blood does look real. Like oh, I, yeah. Like, I've seen in um, post-Blood uh, Feast films that they try and make it bright uh, Kensington red gore um, blood. Uh, but no, this one's, um, like, blood. Like, thick yeah. red blood. It was, yeah, it was actually pretty... Yeah, dark. Other, other times it's like, yeah, that that's not real blood. But other times it's like, oh, good job, yay. Now you know what you're doing, Mario Bava. Yay. Yeah. Um, I mean, now, now I'm... Now, so, so we've had... So now all the teenagers are dead. You were really confused about why for a long time. Well, yeah, I was trying to figure out, and then I, I realised that... Because I was thinking, because I thought that the lawyer had killed the teenagers mm. for the longest time. And I'm like, well, that means that the lawyer must have cared that the body was found... And then I'm like, well, then it must have been Squid Guy, Simon, who did it. But Lauren keep, was like, no, it was Bug Guy. And I'm I like, can't, yeah, I keep thinking Bug Guy killed uh, the what, who we kept calling the dad because of another character later on. Yeah. But uh, because the Bug Guy didn't want um, the dad guy uh, making the bay into a concrete place where he couldn't find bugs anymore. Yeah. So, I'm just trying to remember. So after that happens, did we get the couple again? Do we get the stalkers or not? Uh, no, we get them much later on again. Yeah, no, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I'm actually at a loss now because I just remember oh, yeah. everyone dying. Oh, I know. Um, oh, I'm trying to find the re uh, recap now. I remember, uh, remember everyone dies. Yeah, but it basically, yeah, it. Um, see, so we kind of have. But they, they, uh, um, they murder of a um, Orient Express. It. Everyone's a killer, and everyone dies. Well, not everyone dies in that, but you know what yeah. I mean. Um, so, oh no, that's right, then, yeah, I think the couple end up hanging out with Bug Guy and his wife. Uh, hang on, um, I think there was something in between, wasn't there? I don't know, because Simon kind of doesn't do anything for the longest while after this. Mm. Oh, wait, hang on, um... Yeah, because they still Didn't they find, um, the body, um... No, oh yeah, that's right, yeah, the, the couple go to talk to Simon... And then they find that underneath the tarp is the body of the dad with a squid sitting on it. Mm. And if that doesn't scream, I'm a killer, I don't know what does, but the two of them agreed that, oh, maybe he just found the body. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Mm. Yeah. And so they leave him. And then they start talking to Bug Guy. Oh, wait, wait, now I remember a... something. Now I remember something. Um, uh, who I thought was Bug Guy, but it's actually Simon, stole the Happy Mobile. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, after the death. After all the teenagers die, the Happy Mobile gets stolen and is never seen again. No, oh, bye bye, Happy Mobile. And they like put a lot of effort into just showing the Happy Mobile sitting there on its own. And I'm Free like, from enslavement. Yeah, yeah, it was being. I think it was being enslaved by the teenagers, and so that's why it got happy. And, <laughs> and then, then it was it, taken again. Because yeah, well, after it's stolen, you don't see the front anymore. So I think yeah, I think the story is really about the bright yellow Happy <laughs> Mobile and his misadventures. Mm. I think that's what it is. Mm. Still had a bright, happy face. On. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it was still bright and happy, but we didn't see the face after it was stolen. Mm. And then it went missing, never to be seen again. Yeah. I'm trying to... So I think then we went to the couple... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think... Guy. Now I remember. Um, I think... Um... Wasn't the bug guy gone at some point? Oh, yeah, the bug guy... Yeah, no, that's right. The bug guy ended up... 
Now, this was after the... So, they saw... They did the little talk going, I reckon Simon had motive to fake a suicide. So, yeah, Mm. bug, Bug Guy... Bug guy's wife and the couple who we forgot existed mm. start talking and go. I reckon that Simon. Simon is a religion. Um, they they were talking about how Simon was the illegitimate son of the um woman who, uh, who owned the place, the one that was killed in the very beginning, yeah. the one that started this whole. Mess. Yeah, the one who was had the fake suicide, and so then, for a reason I genuinely don't know. The bug guy ends up at the lawyer's guy's house. Um, he went to the lawyer's house because then he runs out of the building because he sees the dead bodies. No, 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 that's later. Um, oh, yeah. Oh. Ah, this film. Yeah, so it got, it got very confusing and it makes it hard to retrace. Um, and I think in some ways that's a good thing because it makes you actually think about it instead of those films that are just sort of like... Yeah, yeah, it does better than... And then this happened. Like... Mm. It's not yeah, mo- a bad the film, film. The films I keep seeing, in, uh, the films I saw before this, it was just mainly following one guy going from kill, 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 kill. Yeah. But this time we kind of got, we're not, yeah, it was actually complex and lots of layers. No, did we have the um, uh, l- lawyer's lover rock up at this point? Much later on. I'm still, I think we're still pretty early on, like in the second act or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying, trying to, to piece together Ugh. exactly what ended up happening to get to the point of the couple visiting the lawyer. Mm. No, it, no, not the lawyer, the bug guy. No, they go, well, they visit the bug guy, but then they end up at the lawyer's place. Because that's when she finds the bodies, and then she ends up with a pair of nail scissors. Well, a knife that turned into nail scissors. Where are we going from? Alright, um, sorry, we, oh, we just had to cut out a little bit there. Um, we finally got a better idea of what happened. We yes. just Yeah, so it's just a big complicated mess, and we kind of started losing track of things, and we completely forgot there was a whole red herring sequence. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of fell for, um, for, fell for Bug Guy being one of the murderers, um, because uh, that was a red herring um, when, after the couple talked, the couple with the caravan with the kids, remember the kids? Oh, yeah, yeah, the kids, I... Uh. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so, um... So, after they talked, um, to the tarot lady and the bug guy about, um, the legitimate son, the woman of the couple just went up, you know, became, uh, laid in the and decided we have to bump him off. Um... Yeah, so she, she's suddenly thinking, wait a minute, if we want the inheritance, we have to kill everyone. And the husband's sort of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, kind of. He seemed really nervous as well. He was pretty much Macbeth at this as well. Yeah, he's, he's kind of like, oh, I guess if that's how you are to do this. Because, of course, they were pretty sure that the um, bug guy, he had a cut hand. Yeah, yeah. He sh- it was uh, The camera was really focusing on the cut hand yeah. um, when they were leaving. But that didn't have anything yeah, related no. or anything. And even like, he had the like, worst excuse. Like, oh, I accidentally cut myself with a pen knife. And it's like, no, that is like the definitive... I'm a killer, and I think in the fact but that But it they, turns out to not be a killer. And I think that was actually good in a way, to be able to go, no, it was actually just a pen knife. He's just a bit of a klutz. Um, mm. Oh, yeah, but a real bug was actually killing that. Mario Bava regret that, really. Yeah, so, um, because oh, when you a have... A twitching bug. Yeah, when you have the impaled couple in the bed, it then did a really good transition to having... Uh, one of the bug guys' bugs being impaled by the needle. Mm. And it was quite a good back and forth. And again... And it might be foreshadowing for Simon being killed. Yeah, and it even, look, and it even makes it look like bug guy's the killer, because look at him doing the same thing to this bug right now. So mm. it was very good at Mr. Action the yeah. whole time. Yeah, and transition. Transitions in this film are really good. Yeah, exactly. Like... Um, the editing is on point. Yeah, so the couple meet up with Squid Guy. Squid Guy Simon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they um, so they talk to him about stuff we don't exactly know what. Yeah, well then they find they basically find the dead body from the start of the film. Oh, just suspiciously see that he found the body. Uh, the body that was floating around. Yeah. No big deal. Nope. Nope. The squid. 
sucking on the face. Yeah. No, no, nothing. Nothing to worry about. No. <laughs> you found that body. You had nothing to do with the murder. I, I, I believe you. Mm. So they head off to the lawyer's place, probably oh. to find all the um, the legal documents. Well, but, you know, did they even sneak into his house, or did they just walk through the front door? Uh, since the kids broke into it, I think they just walked through. Yeah, that's right. So, and it's only the, only the woman went in. No, 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 they both what, went in. Was the guy? Um, no, I don't think at this point the guy was uh, there I think yet. they were both there, but the woman went there in the house. Yeah. And that's when she finds in the bathroom... The four bodies having yeah. a nice bath party. <laughs> Yeah, and and it does a, a most of the, most of this film is pretty um, somewhat timeless with the shots, but then it does um, the wah 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 yeah thing, they, like, uh, with the uh, multiple close ups on the face and the yeah. and the um, bodies like whoa, 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 with the sound effects, and then the lawyer guy shows up, and that made us think, oh, is he the killer? Yeah, because he he, he, he was just... like sitting just holding an axe, staring her down, and at that point, I'm like, all right, he must have. The, and I'm thinking, he must have done the kids, because it's his house. But I'm like, well, that means he needs to be working with Simon. And that, and but before, even before that, we thought, wait, what does this have to do with the entire plot? Well, yeah, and that's the thing, is basically we're like, well, we're clearly um, our um, lawyer friend was in on it. Clearly our lawyer friend's in on it, because he's got four kids in his bathtub dead. And, and in pieces and stuff, like yeah. all bloodied and stuff. That those bodies look pretty good. I'm trying to remember if they were the real bodies or fake bodies. Yeah, or... I don't know, but no, but they look pretty damn good Wait, for his age. When you see a guy with an axe staring down the person who's seen your bodies, you know that they're in on the thing because the teenagers. The only reason they would have been killed is if they had seen the body floating in the lake, and so that's yeah, the which the which is probably care. which is actually probably the reason that what that's when we realize oh Simon did it because they the girl found the body yeah, and so then we have a struggle between um, Lady Macbeth and uh, the guy oh yeah and we got sorry so I was just so <laughs> you've got a man so you've got a bathroom door with a glass like glass on the top pane and bottom pane. And she was trying to sh uh, shove it in the door in his face, yes. trying to block him out. And he's holding an axe. Now, I'm not an expert in physics, but <laughs> when you bring an axe into a glass top pane, you're not going to be cutting your hand because it's the head of the axe doing it. And you're certainly... If and not, the, the glass would have gone through her, not yeah, him. Exactly. Like, you're not... You're at no risk, and if you don't kill her, she'll be injured enough that you can now open the door... And finish her off. Mm. And instead... And you ch you could have easily johnny it. That's what we saying. Yeah. Just kill her through the door. But instead she grabs the scissors and he and she got him on yeah. the side. Yeah, she, get, she gets him through the crotch area. No, no, I think it was actually on the side. It okay. just looks like a crotch Yeah, it's around yeah. there. And he, she brings her hand through the glass and manages to get out uncut. Um, and then, um, at some point we cut to somewhere else, I'm not quite sure Oh, I what. think she runs away first, having... No, no, I remember, I remember, because, um, because we later cut to her back again, and the bug guy running away. Yeah, that's what... right, so what we've got in between then is, um, yeah. lawyer friend's lover. That's right, lawyer that's right. Lawyer lover. That's right, she was trying to call him, I think. Yeah, so the lawyer's lover then brings up a phone, and... No, no, wait, no, wait, that's no. after the bug guy finds the body. No, that's what, uh, yeah, that's after the bug guy calls. Yeah, because what happens, yeah, so bug guy... Okay, so, so, um, okay, no, um... Uh, yeah, bug guy ends up... Wait, didn't, wasn't that part where when the wife of the bug guy trying to find him? Yeah, wife, wife of the bug guy is looking for bug guy. I think, that's... And bug guy... We think that's what happened to each other, I'm not quite yeah, sure. But, but bug guy ends up in lawyer guy's house. And then he runs away because, well... Yeah, he, he sees, like, four bodies and runs... Five, like, technically. Yeah, I have five because you've got lawyer guy crawling along the ground, bloody. Well, look, he looked like he was unconscious yeah. then. Dead then. And so he looks... So he thought that uh, the woman has killed, so yeah. runs away, they call the police, and so, um, so the Lady Macbeth sends her husband after him. Yeah, husband to go for... to kill him before he gets... And here's, here's the thing. <laughs> so, he goes to oh, his this, house this, yeah. to get to the phone... And he looks in the phone book to call the police. <laughs> like, he looks in the phone book. And then he gets strangled with the phone line, which is kind of mundane by the rest of the kills. But the thing is... You don't use a phone book to find police Yeah, number. but then the next shot is lawyer guy's lover calling him. 
without needing a phone book. Like, I don't know how you could not know, like, if maybe everyone always needed a phone book because it was some weird alternative. And apparently, universe. um, Italian, um, number for, for, it's really easy, 112. Oh, it is, it is 112. Yeah, so, yeah, so even so, with a rotary dial, it would have been pretty easy. Yeah, I mean. You don't need a bloody phone book to find the police. Yeah. And, and it's not like, oh, we're just assuming it's the police. No, he says police. Yeah, and then, yeah, when he finally gets the phone, he's like, hey, police. And so he goes, um... His wife gets decapitated. Oh yeah, she was searching for him all over the place. I think that must have been what um what that space was in between, just yeah. her going through every place trying to find him. And so And it's... then he and then she finds um him unconscious. Um th we think he we thought he was dead, just Yeah. Uh, See his lawyer guy. Um dead un um unconscious on the ground, just looking over all the bloody mess. And then she gets her head chopped off by, by the Macbeth. husband. No, the, isn't the wife did that one? The husband, the husband strangled. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was her, guy, was her. And the wife was done by the woman. Oh yeah, that was really um, impressive, actually. Yeah. I think it. I think at some point a car went past. Yeah. So when, while they're doing this tracking down, the lawyer guy's lover drives past, manages to get to the bay quite quickly to find out what's happened to lawyer guy. Mm. And, you know, pr props to her for driving very fast to get there. We're not mm. sure how long... We, this, here's the thing is, we talk about Lawyer Guy's house at the bay, but he was no... Like, we don't actually see him arrive in the bay. We see him leave for the bay. Mm. And, you know, the thing where you've got a whole bunch of murders going on in a bit of a murder mystery feel, it's very hard when you don't even know when people got there. Yeah, that's a problem. You need something there to even know how much time has passed. Yeah, we, we didn't know whether or not he could have done the first murder because we didn't know where he was when. Mm. And, I mean, he's within driving distance of the bay. We know that much because he then does, and he has a house at the bay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, um, that guy was a bit confused about a bit of bit because we just thought he was just a client of Simon. Yeah. He is, he is, but, um, like... Um, he's just basically using Simon to get um, the, the estate. Yeah, so he's, he, his plan with this was... Oh, is, uh, that's actually revealed yeah. uh, when... Okay, so the woman was trying to find... The lover went to the house trying to find him. And it turns out he's alive. It was yeah. just a stab wound. And he's crawling on the ground, bleeding out. So he is, like, barely alive. And he's like, oh, go get Simon. Go get Simon. And so the lover's like, ah. Oh. I'll get to Simon, it's not like he's a killer, but, you know, at the same time, if you had been working with him, you would want to go get him and say, hey, Kill these people up? that's been killed trying to kill me. Exactly. It makes sense. It makes sense. Only, when she gets to our good squid friend Simon's place, Simon instead locks the door on her, locking them both in, and he's like, nah, I'm going to kill you because you screwed me out of the deal, or something. Something like, like, something like basically to the effect of, no, that's right. He's like, you took advantage of me. You were behind that first murder, and then when I killed that first killer... Yeah, that, she you... actually explained in the flashback, yeah. um, spoilers, there's a flashback apparently, yeah. um, to when they were trying to ask the woman for, to, buy, to buy the estate, but she doesn't want to because um, she thinks they were going to spoil everything with the hotels and stuff. Yeah. And then they see, um, so, and then they see her diary, um, which I think according to the Wikipedia page that um the the page that they use as a suicide note translate to something that would um yeah it was um the sweet release of death i think yeah the, I'm, so I'm waiting for the was, sweet release of death it was more of a quote but then they decide uh, they could just use that as a uh, pass off yeah. a suicide note. and so but and that's why they had to do it at this day because it was a, a i think like a year old journal so yes, something. yeah. So Simon has been killing them because we then see him with the bill hook. Yeah, and so that's the thing. So basically, we ha we realize that what we've walked in on is so to catch up is we have old woman and we have man. The and man that the other guy that um they wanted um they figured would get um the place yeah. that they could buy off. So man works with lawyer guy, and lawyer guy's like, all right, you kill the woman, you kill the wheelchair bound woman, and then. You can sell us, you get the inheritance, you sell us the property, we all make a heap of money, yay. But then Simon found out uh, about this guy killing his uh, his, his mom, mom, and so it was like a stab to the back. Yeah, so he killed the man. But who... then but then he was given a payout by the lawyer and his wife 
Um, so that way they could able to buy, get the estate off him since he's the Ill, 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 illegitimate heir. Yeah, so basically you've got the lawyer guy realizes his plan has gone cock up, so he's like, well, I'll just pick the next heir and do the same thing. Unfortunately, the next heir figured that out, and so he goes to kill lawyer's lover because... But not with a bill hook, though. She, he chokes her. Yeah, he chokes her, and basically his reasoning is like, yeah, you killed my mum. And then tried to take advantage of me, which, you know... And fair. then he walks you around meaningfully. Oh, yeah. After, after having killed half the town, he wanders around and gets with stabbed. With music and blue uh, the... blue lighting and everything. Uh, that's like we were trying to sympathise with him. It's like, no, yeah. you're pretty much the minion. Why are we sympathising yeah, yeah. with you? This isn't deep. No. Yeah, yeah when, I, when I kill half the town, I like going for a bit of a walk. And... Then he gets impaled. Oh yeah, it's impaled <laughs> by a spear. Um, yeah, pe- the lawyer's house, lots of African decorations, so lots of spears, and so that's what been constantly been, been being yeah. used. Um, he gets stabbed in the stomach, pinned to a wall by um, Lady Macbeth's husband. Yes, she's not actually called Lady Macbeth, but that's the easiest way to describe her. Yeah, she's like mad with power, wanting it all, and her husband's like dragged along. No, no, yeah. no, no. no. Okay, maybe it's more... Okay, kind of a bit more like the couple in um, the uh, Discworld book, Weird Sisters, which is honestly more of a Dis- Mac- Macbeth parody anyway. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we've got our... now. So, uh, our so, so then they get the legal documents. Yeah, so the two of them, the, the Lady Macbeth and her husband, are now looking for the will because they're like, crap. We need to make sure that we're next in line. And they got them and burnt um, ones that would keep them out, I think. Yeah, they started messing with stuff. However, then the lights go out because... Oh, no, no. Oh, oh. I yeah. thought we I thought we went, went to the end. I no, skipped we're not, quite we're not, a bit. we're not at the end yet. So oh, they're, looking through, okay. they're looking through the lawyer's house. And yeah. Then the lights go out. And, and then he takes out a match. Yeah, he takes out a match, which is a very powerful match that looks more like a torchlight from yeah. the camera's perspective. This goes on for quite a while. He he he's wonder the so the man um yeah so Lady Macbeth's husband is doing the looking around the house trying to figure out who turned the lights out. No no I think they took out the lights out. I think she did. Oh yeah, well, someone turned the lights off. She turned out the lights so that way they wouldn't be spoiled by whoever's trying to kill them. And so you light a match indicating to everyone, <laughs> hey, I'm holding a light source. So I'm here, I'm here, kill me, yeah, kill so me. We're not sure what's going on, and and three times he does this. Yeah, he, he's, he has the. Yeah, patience to light three matches. And then Lawyer Guy, who previously couldn't even stand up, now gets into a wrestling match with Lady Macbeth's husband. And eventually... I can't give credit to the movie. Um, the films I saw before this, they were pretty damn simple. This one's yeah. actually trying well, to have a plot. And that's the thing. I think the problem... Because when you had your video nasties, you're kind of like... They were criticised for their blood content. And mm. it's the thing of good horror films aren't the ones that are bloody. They're the ones that have a good story and just use blood to yeah. enhance them. And this was one of those, and so it falls into the category of all the terrible ones, but it itself wasn't. No, uh, that's plenty of good ones um, mixed in with all the ones that are just pretty much low-budget uh, mm. schlock stuff. Uh, like the previous ones, um, like Absurd, which is pretty much um, a somewhat sort of sequel to Anthropophagus, which was just um, poorly done. Um cannibal film and then there was Axe which was I don't know what the hell that was I haven't seen any of them uh, so uh, I just, I, maybe you could what, uh, listen to the podcast episode we did of that I, we didn't know we kept stalling most of the time and uh, talked about chicken run for a well, bit well I, I see that you're just doing a plug for your channel now which is you know plug within my channel <laughs> oh yeah yeah Every, everyone who's stumbled across this by chance go watch the earlier installments I'm sure they're great I haven't listened to them either yet <laughs> but I'm sure they're good Lauren, Lauren's cool they're, they must be good <laughs> um, anyway we had the oh what was it yeah so the wrestling match Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that I thought they were killing each other with spears. I forgot. You know, mm-hmm. there's the wrestling match first, and then they it ends up with someone being stabbed. But it's uh, because too... they both have seventies brown hair. Yeah, they both have seventies brown hair, and it's really dark. the The lighting director must have been taking a day off. Ah, uh, that he the director is the lighting director. So the director wasn't there, and <laughs> so you can't really see what's happening. Except you see the woman, Lady Macbeth, just watching this kerfuffle and. Eventually, one of the two stands up, and I'm like, oh, crap, it's lawyer guy, we're screwed. But... No. It wasn't! So, we end up... It seemed like the ending was going to be, oh, these two are winning. The end. Everyone's dead. 
And, and we, then, okay. Oh, no. He's my favorite no. part. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so, I'm oh, sorry. I've just got to... I'm sorry. So, we have these two people who have inadvertently masterminded a string of... Well, they've taken advantage of a string of killings and managed to come out on top. These two. They are burning the documents that would make them lose the inheritance. There are no police who know about this situation. They are in the perfect position. They are, like, there. They're going to win this. And so the, we mentioned two kids right at the start. Yeah, the caravan kids. Oh, that reminds me of another transition. When the head yeah. was chopped off, oh. it transitions to a China head being dropped by the kids. That was yeah, brilliant. That was cool. The, but the problem is, though, is that these two kids, they have appeared, I reckon, for a total of five to ten seconds Pretty of much, screen yeah. time up until this point. They appear the they, first time as silhouettes. They appear through a silhouette. Yeah, silhouettes window. in the caravan, trying to act creepy and stuff. Yeah, then they drop a porcelain head to make a cool, so ceramic, ceramic porcelain head, uh, which makes a good cut from a decapitation. Mm, a very good decapitation but, as well. Yeah, but most of the time they look pretty crap. And I just thought I made like a pun there. <laughs> a good cut from a decapitation. I've got to say ah. it again. I'm that proud of it. Anyway, um, oh gosh, so. These kids then, and uh, the couple are embracing, like, yeah, we've got away with that. And then... Burning the documents that they yeah, need Yeah, they're burning it. They, they've they won. The and day is... Um, it's now daytime. Oh, oh, my God. This is the best part. This is hilarious. Sense, it cuts to the second. You see a gun at a the bottom shotgun. of the frame. And you just hear someone go, hey, Mom, Dad. Bang. Bang. <laughs> and freaking... Okay, now, I don't know a lot about guns, but the distance... Is very far. And, and one being, shot. And it's being pulled by a kid, remember? One shot and a child <laughs> fires the gun with such accuracy that one bullet kills two adults while they're while side they're onto it. Like, this isn't a piercing, like a sniper when you get two people in a, lined up so you can get the bullet between them. They are side by side. And this shot, it's a shotgun. It goes for the body, the back, yeah. It's a shotgun. And it's a side on. And now, at that range, the shotgun might have injured one, might have injured two, but it cleans up both of them. They fall down dead. The child doesn't get knocked back from the recoil, and these two kids, cute music starts playing, and they're like, oh, wow, mum and dad are good at playing dead, and laugh. And I'm like, what? What? He pretty much broke then. I, I, I know, was cracking up laughing. He was just, broken. It was a well-crafted mystery. Sure, we saw who the killer was We at the were start. confused throughout it, but at least it was because of it the plot. Made, was... It made sense at the end. It did come together. But, um... So yeah. know, we, we got confused by the teenagers, but they kind of made sense when you realised, oh, they were they, witnesses. They worked, you know. It worked. It all tied up. And we got this problem of... It felt like Bonnie and Clyde. Like, Bonnie and Clyde, was that 40s? Um... 60s, I think, that was pretty much the start of when mainstream cinema was like, oh, we can't act all cutesy and dramatic and epic or whatever. Yeah. We need to be a bit more realistic. And that was the thing, so, because the, uh, the ending of Bonnie and Clyde, sorry if you haven't seen it, but basically it is Bonnie and Clyde get gunned down by the police. And it's sudden, it's unexpected. The film just ends with everyone dead. And it works because you kind of see it coming. Mm. It's not out of the blue. But this is just two children... Who have had a combi- like total screen time of five to ten seconds, blow their parents' faces off by well, accident. Well, not face back. Well, yeah, blow the blow the parents up by mistake and don't realize what they've done and laugh <laughs> and run off to the bay playing oh, together. That was hilarious. I, I know it shouldn't have been. I know it shouldn't it was, have been there, but it, it just was, still cracked like, me up. It was for a feel like it kind of like maybe. People called it a video nasty because they were just so frustrated with the ending. No, 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 no. The thing about video nasty is, is that most of the time the people who objected to it didn't even watch it. Yeah, and I mean, I, I know there was a real reason, but just given every other video nasty that we've talked about on this show have been terrible, to have this one good one, I think that it was someone pissed off at the ending. That's what I'm saying. I'm justifying it. By that. Nah. I, I know I know it's wrong, but I'm just gonna say that's what it is. I know I'm completely uh, I'm wrong. I'm just saying, um, if if Mary Whitehouse saw the ending, um she would have pretty much blamed she would have pretty much blamed that film for influencing children to act bad or whatever her nonsense is. Oh by the way, um the thing about Mary Whitehouse, sorry, Chris, is that oh, yeah. 
uh, it's not just video analysis and stuff. She pretty much objected. Uh, she was pretty much the moral guardian. She objected to everything. She's the reason why Doctor Who then became a bit more childish than uh, dark because she um she was protesting it and such. Like she believed it was immoral and such. Well, even um so at the start, like William Hartnell, um. There were some because, like, if you watch the first season of Doctor, uh, I was Who, more. I'm think I'm saying more like semis when it happened. Yeah, but Tom and, Baker era. Well, that's thing is because it's actually the the evolution of Doctor Who is interesting because mm. your first season, the Doctor nearly murders a caveman, and it's his companions who are the moral compass and say, "Dude, what the hell." Mm. As the show evolved, the Doctor slowly became the hero character because William Hartnell was like, "Wait, this is meant to be a kids' show. Why am I being an asshole?" And so then you had that evolution of the Doctor as the moral compass. Yeah. But then when you hit your Pertwee Tom Baker era, suddenly you kind of start getting the Doctor a bit more, you know, the more darker sides at times. And then fifth, then you have the Mary What's Her Face. And then it's Mary getting, Whitehouse. Mary Whitehouse. Oh, she looks like a really old grandma sort oh, of figure. You actually. say the name and I can picture her. Yeah. Like, and so you start with that and then. Then it became brighter. She was again. really homophobic too, honestly. And one of the things she objected to was homosexuality. Well, wasn't that the sixties? Yes. Um, she continued, She basically protested from uh, I don't know sixties, fifties, sixties, seventies to um to up to until she she died. Yeah. So she would she would have protested in the eighties. Like I watched a whole debate between uh, her and a group of anti vio nazi people between people who thought, no, we shouldn't have this um, VO uh, Recordings Act. It's going to cause a lot of unnecessary censorship. And she was horrible. Mm. She basically tried to make um, make one of the uh, people debating her a, a magnet. Like, um, okay, basically, he asked her a question, a very reasonable question, and then he, t- uh, and then she, he, he, and then she asked him a question to not answer it. Oh yeah, that's that's your common interviewing technique. Yeah. It's like you're a Margaret Thatcher. That that she was friends with Margaret Thatcher. Oh gosh, that, that's the story. <laughs> yeah, I just remember the whole um, I think I forgot who it was, but there was an interviewer <laughs> talking to Margaret Thatcher, and it's like um. Well, so it's more of a debate than an interview, but yeah. it's like, uh, I'm passing this on you because my answer is always perfect. Well, yeah, and that, that's the thing. It's the whole. You can, dealing with the media and dealing with arguments are kind of similar. So, when you're dealing in an argument, if you respond to them like you're dealing with the media, that means that you know you're wrong, um, mm-hmm. or rather you know that you're not getting your point across, and so you try to deflect the issue. Yeah. <sighs> and I mean, in the case of news interviews, you they'll kind of try to push it the wrong way, so it's a good idea to, but in a debate, if the point's relevant, you, you address it, you know... That's kind of part of it. I mean, and you've got to be able to pick up on when people are doing it, when you're watching debates. Mm. You know, notice when people are just changing the topic. Uh, I hate her so very much. She only did one good thing in her life, which was um, protect p- children from being participants in child pornography. That was the only yeah, good no, thing. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty legitimate thing. Yeah, I, that's I, the I only good get, thing. I the rest is that. just moral panic rubbish. Uh, mm. what, what were we talking about? Oh, we're talking about the ending. Yeah, we yeah. Just... Basically, I thought the ending. I thought the ending was hilarious. Our place and she had been there, but hilarious. And I just and it's pretty obvious that if she saw the ending, okay, she's basically complaining about Vio Nazis while also admitting she has never seen them. Yeah. And and it's just thought that yeah, she would definitely use this to convince people that Vio Nazis are in, and think of the children sort of logic behind yeah. that. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the th- and that was the thing I noticed about the ending is. While the children killed the parents, mm. if you look at the way it's shot, you could actually believe the child actors didn't know that's how it went. Because uh. you never see the child actors on screen at the same time as the adults. They mm. make a joke, mum and dad are good at playing dead. I don't know if the kids actually knew that's how it ended. I don't know if they knew they were Maybe, killers. maybe. Um, I think they were on screen when they were in the caravan with, um, with the parents outside. Yeah, but, that, but that's, other than that... They, seeing that, you know, that could be anything. I'm not sure how... I don't know... Because it's not like in um, Kick-Ass, where you know Hit Girl knew... What, the actress for Hit Girl knew what was going on because she was doing it. But these kids, I get... The, I'm not sure whether or not they were actually witnessing all the stuff. Because I know part of the thing with these sorts of films is people worrying like what's going to happen to the child who was starring in it 
But I think this film kind of avoids that because while the kids do something completely stupid <laughs> at the end, I can't. I just hate it. At the same time, you can't really go, oh, ethically, the kid. I can't say, oh, I'm not sure the kids should have done that because realistically, I'm pretty sure they had no idea that that's what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, they thought, they didn't know the gun was real. In the yeah. story, they didn't know the yeah, gun was I, real. They said that they thought the parents were playing. They didn't know, had no clue that they became murderers. Well, at the same time, like, you have a gun and don't get any recoil? I, I'm sorry, just, no, no. <laughs> like, grow, like, adults with certain pistols need to properly hold it to avoid the recoil. A child fires it and... No flying backwards, and they're just sort of happy and laughing, and... And the music is really, really happy. And what is gun safety? <laughs> what is gun safety? Don't ask Lady Macbeth and her husband. And also, that's the other thing. That's they the brought thing. a gun, yeah. and didn't use it throughout the th movie. Yeah, you've got to, like, like... Every problem would have been solved if they shot everyone. They, um, I just... The, the whole thing would have been fixed if they cut out the children scene. They, uh, but I think hmm. Mario Bava just wanted the parents to die. He wanted everyone to die except for the kids. Yeah, but there's, there are better ways of doing that mm. than... <laughs> let's make it a joke. Because the rest of the film wasn't a joke. It's like... It, it's like being Rickrolled. That's what it felt like. <laughs> You go into something, and you're like, oh, this is cool. And then, right when you're like, okay, so how's it? Oh, you got me. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Only, no. Like, did people pay money to watch this? Probably, uh, when it was released, yeah. In fact, um... People? In fact, um... Okay, you heard of William Castle, right? The heard of the what? William Castle. No, I have not. Oh, he's a, he's a director back in the 60s who... We're trying to be like um, Will, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, but for a more broader audience, more low budget stuff. Um, he was a guy who did um, House on Haunted Hill with uh, Vincent Price. And he basically did these gimmicky marketing things, uh, like buzzers underneath seats for the tingler. That's what, or uh. a skeleton going um, zooming across the theater for. Um, I think I still think House on Haunted Hill maybe. Uh, that ended up with kids throwing ro uh, throwing stuff at it. Oh yeah, and um, and Mary Bava, he usually doesn't do this sort of thing, but he did, uh, but he did this for um for, the, um for this film where there was um, with um where the ticket holders were warned of, about the film by um by a final warning station as they were um in. As they were getting tickets in person, that sort of thing. It's oh. kind of like how he did, what he did for his first film, like that, where he um, got everyone um, death insurance or something like that. Ah, uh, to sign a waiver before you see it. Yeah, that he uh, that was he got actual nurses and stuff for um, oh, wow. William Castle did for that, and then after at some point afterwards he had a coward's corner where everyone who wanted their money back. <laughs> but yeah, it was so um so yeah, people did did um get money. Money for this, uh, I mean, pay to see this. Yeah, because I like, you know. It was just on VHS where it had problems. Yeah, because, like, that's the thing, like, Rick Rolls are funny, because I didn't spend 10 bucks for my ticket to watch a YouTube video. I spent, like, 10 bucks to watch, like, if I had spent 10 bucks to watch this film and then they do that, I'm like, I feel jipped. I feel like I watched Ocean's 12 again. Oh, God. Like, you know. Well, I, 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 yeah, ah. Oh, that's, that's the equipment. See. See how you react when you get reminded of the ending to Ocean's Twelve. Not the ending. Uh, well, kind of ending. Um, the problem with Ocean Ocean's Twelve, I felt, was that the the whole con wasn't as good as the first because it's, it's basically saying it was all fake yeah, yeah, and yeah. they already stole it. You know, and that's the, actually yeah, Ocean's Twelve and other pro yeah, and that's the problem. The problem with Ocean's Twelve was that the ending made you realize it was a waste of time. Yeah, exactly. At least Ocean's Thirteen, it was all oh, uh, a uh, casino sabotage. Eleven and Thirteen are good. Twelve is terrible, and that's what I mean by this film. You watch it, and like, you have that mystery going. In Ocean's 12, you've got that mystery going. What's going on? What's going on? Then you hit an ending that undoes it all. Yeah. That's what it is. A very like, simple ending that just made everything pointless, and look back and I don't know, like, why did you do that in the first place then? Like, the whole Julia Roberts thing. Yeah, and you have your, your, your this one, sure, they, they, weren't, they hadn't killed the parents before it all started, but you just have that 
feeling of loss, that yeah. feeling of, I sat through this, I deserved better than yeah. this. Yes, like, the ending oh, is always um, the thing you always have to make up on. Like, even if the film's crap, you mm. could you could be able to save with the ending. Like, there's this film called Razor Smile, which is basically trying to be, like, a vampire romp of uh, 90s vampires with the leather jackets and the assassins and stuff. And cliche, it was playing on that, um, just seemed like it was a typical one. Until the ending, where it just revealed that the hero vampire and the bad guy vampire were just doing a whole role play thing for sex. Wait, that, mm, um, no, yeah. no, okay, uh, I know it just sounds weird um, coming out of my mouth yeah. like this, but on, on film, it works because they realise, oh, we're just playing, they're just playing up the cliches for a game. Oh, uh, yeah. That, okay. that makes sense. Like I found the ending of this film hilarious, but problematic. Yeah. I you yeah, know I I would I would have not been happy. It was like I was trying to think, what other films have I watched where I've like had that feeling? I mean, oh, what was the one where? Oh wait, no, I'm thinking of yeah the the Doctor Who episode, um, the one the Angels Take Manhattan, that was. The, it was, the giant uh, the, Liberty. The, well, the Statue of Liberty being an angel was weird, but no, the the issue I had with it was. You have this whole dramatic, crap, we have to die. Like, we have to die. That's the only way to save Manhattan. And I'm like, that's cool. But then, them dying undoes the time loop so they come back to life only to be trapped back in time. No! Just freaking kill them! That is more emotional and more powerful than giving us ten more minutes of slow, dreary music and these two characters who we know are gonna die. You, the less, like, if you try to make us feel something, we won't. You've got to just do it and let us be smart enough to go, wow, that was upsetting. You know, make us care about the character. Yeah, like, again, back to Ocean's 12, it didn't, really did seem like it was all falling apart for the team. Yeah. Um, and then it turns out, no, they were pretending the whole time. Pretend, they, pretend, yeah. pretend. And I, I don't know why they were pretending, because they had already gotten away with it. All the time, I'm like, well, they were pretending, apparently they were pretending for... The cameras of the cat burglar guy, which does not work. They were, yeah, they, they were, they were protect. They had to they, basically, if the if they stopped doing anything, the cat burglar would have known that they had it. So I get they had to be doing something. But it just made all the distractions not make sense and pointless, really. And you know, getting themselves all arrested, like that was how they were gonna go about it, like. Wow. And the whole Julie Roberts thing, apparently, uh, why did they go through that if they already had it? Yeah, I mean, that, that sort of gambit was, yeah. I mean, mm. yeah. 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 You know, I, I, let, let's think about the good parts of the film. Hey, remember when there was a squid on that guy's face? Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I'm happy. I can, I, I can be happy now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Well... Yeah, the, the film disgusted a lot of people when it first came out, but it did impress the right people as well. Like Dario Argento, who was very much a... Um, we're definitely going to see a lot more of his films in this list, don't worry. Okay. Uh, uh, he, um, he's behind Suspiria. I do not know Suspiria. Oh, you should. It's I pretty. Should? It's a really pretty movie. Okay, I will become familiar with it shortly, probably. Well, not shortly. I think it might be in Section 3. No. Oh. Oh. Uh, so, okay, section three is basically all the ones that weren't prosecuted and stuff, but were still clearly in the list anyway. Bec the less obscene films, apparently, but still enough for the list. Okay, so it's like you're, you're rated R18, not X. Mm. Yeah, but apparently uh, Dario Argento loved the film so much that he got the projectionist fr a, f a projectionist friend of his to steal a print during its first run in Italy... And so the theatre had to show Blood Brides instead, and he still has a print to this day. Wow, okay, that's that's something. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it was a personal favourite of Mario Bava. Yeah? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, might... I, I would be happy with this up until... I'm not going to talk about the ending yet. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just banned. I'm just going to pretend the film ended with them burning the documents. Well, I, gonna... I still kind of think something should have happened to the parents if he... If they well, should die. But the bad guys are allowed to win. But they should die for the um, whole point of everyone dying. Yeah, unless they both accidentally stabbed each other in some, like, embarrassing, oh, hey, I'm gonna trip over. Oh, wait, someone left this tree root sticking You would have still hated that, too. I would have. 
I, I think I would have hated it if they... Because the thing is... No, that's my thing. I get sometimes you want everyone to die. And I get that sometimes it works. But as soon as you do it because you want to do it, and not because the story, it makes sense in the story, that's when it becomes lame. Mm. It's the whole, you've got to give us a reason for them to die. Yeah. And, you know, unless you do a Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Mm. Uh, I, f I just remembered um, some other titles the film had, like, there were oh, more titles. Um, like, when, it was originally called, again, sorry for my use of Italian, um, Oda de Cane, uh, Oda de Cane, which is basically meaning means uh, stench of flesh, and the shooting title was "Thus do we live to be." Thus do we live to be evil. I think that name works a lot better, but I don't know. That name doesn't work if they all die. Well, that, I think that's a. I think that's what it means. Like all the evil dies. Well, th thus do we live to be evil, mm, and that's sure. why if they use that title, then. But they didn't use that title, so it's okay. Okay, another thing we do on the show is that, well, the reason why the whole moral panic started is because all the stupid newspapers like Daily Mail caught, um, caught on to the covers and the taglines and saw it. This will ruin everything. Oh, no. Hmm. Like all the artwork and um, VHS artwork um, stuff. Um, like, um, okay, um, like the taglines... Do you think, according to the taglines, it it's as bad as it is? Like, uh, the second film rated V for violence. Wait, there's a rating that's V for violence? No, there isn't. That's just a tagline. That, that, that's, that, that sounds like something an edgy 13-year-old would write. I that was one of the, the uh, American releases. I, I would have written that on, like, a poster in primary school for funny, like, as a joke. Mm. Like... Wow, that, that was an official tagline. Mm -hmm. Alright. They came to play, they stayed to die. Isn't that child's play? No. <laughs> Sorry, I just, you know, coming... Oh, wait, who came to play? <laughs> who came... Who was playing? Are we the teenagers? The te but the teenagers weren't the main characters, and they they didn't stay to die. They didn't want to die. They're not... What? Okay, alright, alright. Let, thirteen characters, thirteen murders. Wait... Was that a tagline? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Wasn't Wait, how many were there? You got four? Alright, you got the four teenagers, the husband, and the Carol wife, um, the uh, the other couple, uh, counting, the lawyer. I'm counting 14. Oh. So you got l lawyer lover, bug man wife, Lady Macbeth husband, Simon, then you've got grandma... First killer, that's only nine. Oh, four teenagers, thirteen. Oh no! I thought it would be less, but oh yeah. Thirteen, and then two kids, fifteen. But no, 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 they weren't killed. Yeah, but it says thirteen characters, thirteen writers. It was fifteen. But they weren't even characters though. Well, that's true. Yeah, I would, I would argue there were soft props. Yeah. Um. Terror flows deep. I don't know what that means. Isn't that Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> you know, flowing. You look at your river. Um. Wow. All right. Um. Diabolic, fiendish, savage. You may not walk away from this one. Diabol isn't it diabolical? What I've never heard diabolic used until this podcast, where the f phrase diabolic has come like five times. Diabolical. Like oh, it is diabolical. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just saying that's the thing with these taglines. They always try to do entice you in like, oh, you may never um um this uh, uh, um. Um, like set, like uh, warnings and stuff. Yeah, but like uh, this one's the most gory of them all, sort of thing, and that that got the newspapers believing it. Yeah, that's the thing, and I, I think if you look at it, because yeah, if you look at the way films are advertised now, they don't tend to go in for that. Mm -mm. I mean, Human Centipede Three is something else altogether. <laughs> let's just not. Let's just it's not. That, human Centipede Three. Yeah, there's a third one. I know that. I know the third one. I'm just yeah. trying. I'm just trying. The one where all the prisoners' asses yeah, are Yeah, together. yeah, so, yeah, so the first one was just over the top. The second one was then them going... Yeah, the second and third ones were basically them going, this is what everyone thought the first one was. Mm. So let's go and just do something over the yeah, top. Yeah, I think the tagline was, um, for the third one was, this isn't politically correct. Yeah, and, the, like, I, I tried... Re I don't think I could even get through reading the plot description on Wikipedia. It was that bad. <laughs> 
it was just that. And like, apparently they killed, just simply killed off the ones who actually enjoyed that. It, I just... But anyway, anyway ta- better, let's look at old taglines of movies that... Yeah, yeah, but that's because I think that might have something to do with the uh, Vietnam Nazis. Like, okay, here's, um, here's one of the VHS covers um, before, uh, before the whole moral panic. Alright, so we've got a big knife going into a tiny man's head. It, with tentacles everywhere. Oh, yeah. And yellow, because giallo is actually... I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's actually Italian for yellow. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, and here, um, I think this one's more. Co- this one, this covers more co- common, and this one's honestly my favorite. All red. Oh, okay. So yeah, we 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 got um. With that's actually um showing off one of the deaths, the death of the yeah, woman so, who kept um so showing we've off got, the cats. We got naked lady being hooked around the neck by the um. Bill Hook. With a bay of blood. A blood B- like, bay of blood. Red river. And, like, instead of her running like she was in the film, she's still in the water, which is completely red. Yeah, that, that one's my favourite. That one looks and like, beautiful. You know, that, that looks like something you might actually see nowadays. Yeah. Um, and this is the cover once they um, they pretty much got all the rules set up for what v, um, what the VHS covers have to be, like, and stuff. Okay. Like, not much of gore, not much oh, of wow. anything. Just have to be white and stuff, and make sure the synopsis doesn't really contain much. It's basically just black and white so it with looks the like, hand um, coming the out. The iconic is it Night of the Living Dead with the hand out of the grave? No, that what that film was that. That one was Evil Dead. I think that one actually reminds me more of the um of the red but like a bay of blood co- cover with the woman okay. um, reaching out. Because um, that that one they're like I'm trying to think what is like that cliched final shot where you see a hand sticking out of a grave. That's yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, there was basically a whole... Um, I forgot what the company is called, organization is called, but basically yeah. they're in charge of um, telling um, the film distributors what they would want the covers to be like. What They're basically the editors of this sort of thing. Like They don't want the VHS covers to be like the ones that cause a moral panic. Yeah. They want them... But then again, this... The point of all of this is to make sure that children don't buy them. Yeah. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that meant to kind of mess it up by having it be like something that looks tamer than it is? Yeah, and there's always that awkward thing of, you know, how do you put something up and go, hey guys, hey kids, don't get this without making them go, oh, I want to get that now. Yeah, I think the whole ball pan could have been solved if the VHS shops should have an age restriction regarding those rules. Um, you're only this old... If you are allowed to rent this, well, well, the, the, um, the, the, um, the problem is they kind of thought children were renting them. It's actually a lot less than that, but there are still at least a few, and it was just like, um, you, um, you would need permission before getting well, it. Yeah, because the, the thing with like in America, um, oh, this is in America. This no, is this is Britain. Oh, this is Britain. I'm not sure because I know like we like we have the whole like you need to, like, legally, you cannot hire an MA-rated movie unless you are 15. Mm. And, like, surely they had those age No, 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 this was back in the 80s. This was when the whole market was just dying out. They didn't have rules for this yet. Okay, so they, they had the, like, rating guidelines, but there weren't any, there wasn't anything legally binding? Okay, or... um, okay, the whole moral panic started before... VHS had rules and stuff. That's why it was so big because okay. anyone could make a film for VHS and um, there wasn't a rating system for it. Uh, even, so even films that weren't really given a certification could able to come uh, out on VHS. Okay. That's actually what got Daily Mail started. Um, Daily Mail got um, up in arms about it in the first place. Oh, Home Market has all these scary movies, blah, 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 blah. That sort of thing. Um, um, it's unrestricted, blah, blah, stuff like, nonsense like that. Uh, okay. Um, and, um, that's what pretty much started the whole moral panic. It just kind of kept dominoing from there. Yeah, and the problem is, as soon as one thing slightly questionable comes up, it can be jumped on. Mm. And it does, because it doesn't matter how yeah. many, you know, legitimate things there are. As soon as there are so, any not. So then there were um so then there were these laws coming up later, like the VO's recording act of um of nineteen eighty four. Um I can't remember exactly what the rule was, but basically um the VHS t- copies have to have certification now. Mm-hmm. And if and they can be refused or they can be cut. If you are that severe you have to be like that. Well, 
Like you said, I would argue though, because wasn't Bay of Blood able to be shown in the cinema? It was like shown that? in cinema, but um, probably refused um, certification, and it's it probably was able to be shown in America and Italy and stuff like that, places like that. Because yeah, it just sort of strikes me funny that you know if you're like this is something that's okay for cinema but not okay for VHS. Mm, yeah. And it's like why? Because of because according to a lot of people back then, the home is for family. Well then. Yeah. What? Yeah, I don't. You know. It's it was a very nonsensical, more panic. Like people got arrested over movies. That's how bad it was. Wow, man! I can imagine like you know sitting in prison. And it's like, like, oh, what are you in for? <laughs> Murder. What did you do? <laughs> I watched Bay of Blood. Oh crap, man! You're you're in charge now. <laughs> yeah, like um, at first it was mainly just uh, VHS sellers. Um, like if they sold, if they were selling this, they would be fined or go to jail. And then later on. When the whole underground for um, for VHS collectors and um, private sellers and uh, um, well, it's just um, um most of the time it's collectors, but occasionally it's like um, trading and selling, and because they couldn't get the VH a full copy of the, a full uncut thing um, in England, they would have to try and find it in other countries and basically smuggle them in. Yeah, that got people arrested too. <laughs> And and the collections raided and stuff like that, yeah. and even with films that aren't even on the video Nazis list, um, got taken away and stuff. Oh wow! Yeah, it's really stupid. Like um, like before the list was formed, um, when police were stu- were police were just starting to raid places and stuff, and they kind of got the wrong movies in general, even if not horror films. Like one time they got a Dolly Parton film. You sort of see that name and go, I mean, I don't know anything about you, but you, that sounds like a rom-com. Or uh, like Dolly Barton is, okay, Dolly Barton is that blonde woman with the big boobs who sings country. Isn't that all of them? No, no. <laughs> but basically she starred in the Yeah, movie, I know, I know. But yeah. basically she starred in the movie called the, um, the Big Courthouse or something like that. It was just basically a musical. Oh, okay. So they kind of, so the people, so the police raiding the place just saw it was a porn. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, I can understand why, but, you know, at the same time, getting rid of a Dolly Parton musical. Yeah. You know, not, not the worst thing to lose, um, you know. I, I'd, I'd be more upset if they took, you know, other films. Yeah, um, but that's the point. Um, that's why the list was, ten, um, well, there are a lot of reasons for the list to form, but the main reason is, all right, we need a list of what exactly films we well, should take away. Yeah, I mean... They I, end up burning them. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how yeah. bad it was. Burning films. There were a lot of, there were definitely a lot of God winning after that. Mm. Oh well. Yeah, so you get the idea of what this podcast is about. Yeah, well, I I already knew that was what we were going on about. Just kind of thinking the whole yeah, no, Dolly Parton, like she's yeah, no, we can't have her. We can't we can't be listening to country and western musicals. <laughs> uh, that's not my point, but I I know it's not your point. I just <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah dwelling on yeah, that the... bit. Yeah, the um, the moral panic was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, like yeah. one film we're gonna uh, watch much later on in the seas, um, that film the the distributors of that film they wanted more attention to it, so they kind of wrote a fake um outrage letter to Mary Whitehouse. Oh, of course they did. Basically, tried to poke the bear, trying to get some attention. But any publicity is good publicity, and that just got her. Oh, that just, that just got the moral panic rolling, really. <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, no, we we'll, we'll make bad publicity to get our film like popular, or we can just get it banned. Wow, this 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 was a bit of a backfire. I think I need my child to shoot me now, and then we can really complete the cycle. Um, oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, the director behind that film. Um, he was in court because a lot of people thought all the murders and stuff in the film were real. Oh, is this like on um, Cannibal Holocaust? Exactly. Yes, that one, that, oh boy, that was, that was an adventure. The only, the only murder that, thing that was murder, only thing related to that was really the, um, the tor- uh, the turtle torture thing. They, the, that's the only one they did, a real torture, a turtle. The. Hmm. Mm. The rest of the time, it was just, like, really good effects. And besides, with VHS being the quality it is, yeah. it just well, looks real. A lot of older films don't look very good on Blu-ray. 
because they were designed with the lower quality. Oh, that, um, that one was, uh, the one we saw was um, a Blu-ray rip, I think. Um, okay, but you, like, I think I've heard the original Alien, if you watch that on Blu-ray, the, um, like, if we watch it with, like, a Blu-ray TV or whatever, like, the quality, it shines out all of the, like, things you weren't meant to see or things mm. that you couldn't pick up in the lower quality edits. Yeah. And so... You know, case for don't just buy the high def of everything. Some things it ruins. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna watch that. Um, we're, we're gonna watch Cannibal Holocaust at some point. Oh gosh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I want to see that one. Mm. I'm, I'm quite happy just knowing the whole. Ah, oh, we didn't murder anyone. You didn't. No, we just told them to change their identities and move away. Can you be sure they're not dead? Yeah, let's change the topic. Yeah. <sighs> oh, they were alive. Oh, yeah, they, they were just, alive, but... They yeah. just tried to make it out, oh, yeah, this is definitely a snuff film. Yeah. And I just kind of got the whole moral panic within the uh, viewing announcement's moral panic of snuff films being real. Yeah, and, you know, it was, like, very legitimate-looking one. Mm. I think we ran out of things to talk about. Yeah, I, I feel like when, when you're in the end... All so... right. All right, join us next time for Nazi exploitation, our first one. Oh yay! Yay! yay. That's that's exactly what we need. More, <laughs> more, more German people naked and getting murdered. <laughs> All right, bye. See ya. And this episode's outro is "Twitch of the Deaf Nerve" by The Hangman. This has been a Schlock and Terra Video Nasties podcast, created by Lauren Fox. Produced from Channel Zero, Manic Expression, Reviewers Unite, Team Night Saturn, and Audigomic Productions, and introduced by Grady Smithy. All material in this podcast is used under the terms of the Fair Use Doctrine, and all rights belong to the original creators. Sound effects by Jacob Ziar, NPO, and Freesound.org. Opening theme song by Voice of Doom.